Hey guys, it's Joy the London Physio. Welcome back to my space on the internet. Whether you're watching on IGTV, Facebook or YouTube, today I've got a special guest with me and I'm so excited to introduce you to her, but I'll let her introduce herself to you. Hi, my name's Sophie. I'm a consultant dietitian and I do lots of things in the dietitian space. So I have clinics, I do media work, I do lots of consultancy for companies and product development stuff. Um, I worked in the NHS for a long time before I moved into academia, so I was lecturing and researching for five years in my subject, which was amazing, but I'm very pleased to say that I now just work for myself and run my business, which Yay. is citydietitians.co.uk. <laughs> so make sure you watch the video till the end, because at the end we're going to give you four amazing top tips on how to increase your fibre in your diet. Do I say that yes. right? Oh, don't worry, whatever. But <laughs> stay till the end so you can get the tips. And make sure you check Sophie's links down below. So can you tell us the difference between soluble and insoluble fibre? Soluble fibre is the soft type of fibre that draws water to the bowel and keeps the stool soft, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's a bit like the fibre that you see in melon right. or the inside of an apple, yeah? And the type of fibre that's in mushrooms and things like that. So it's soft and it turns to liquid if you soak it. Okay. So oats are another great example of soluble mm, fibre. Yes, I had lots of oats when I had my pals. <laughs> soluble fibre, it keeps your stool soft, it creates like a gel in the bowel which feeds bacteria, but also keeps the stool, draws moisture in, keeps it soft and easy to pass, right? Okay. Insoluble fibre is the stuff that's harder and that creates bulk to the stool. So it creates like a, a bulk and it has some texture to the stool so that when your bowel is squeezing the poo along, peristalsis, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's got something to squeeze on. If you just had soluble fiber, it would be quite liquid and there'd yeah. be nothing much there. Yeah. And that's good for, in some cases. Yeah. But if you want it to push along easily and comfortably, then you need some insoluble fiber. Okay. And insoluble fiber, for example, will not go through your dishwasher. So anything that you see collecting your dishwasher will also end up in your yeah. colon. That's such a good way to think about it because our bodies are kind of like machines really, aren't they? You know, we eat things and then it doesn't come out the same way we ate it because your body's done lots of things to it. Yeah. And then the bits that it doesn't want comes out. Absolutely. So it's a really good way to think about it. Insoluble fibre, so the harder stuff, that won't pass through a sieve, right? Mm -hmm. But soluble fibre will pass through a sieve. So like if you mushed up melon, it would pass through a sieve. Mm -hmm. If you mush up oats, for example, yeah. some of it will pass through the sieve, but yeah. some will collect, and that's because there's a bit of a mixture of soluble and insoluble fibre yeah. in oats, depending on the, the type of oats that you get. Yeah. You know, so you get like the really chunky ones, yes. more insoluble fibre, right. but still lots of soluble fibre. Yes. Whereas like ready bread will almost pass completely oh. through a sieve. Which one's good for you, by the way? All. We need both, yeah. and we need a good variety of both. So what are the links between certain fibres and the disorders of the colon? So there's certain fibres in food that are called fermentable carbohydrates, okay. yeah? and they're parts of sugar, and they're in quite lots of different things. And those are the things that our body ferments really rapidly and they can okay. cause things like wind and bloating and diarrhea mm. for okay. some people. So some of those like IBS type symptoms. Right, gotcha. Other people might find that when they switch on to say a plant-based diet and they have mm -hmm. a big increase in the amount of fibre in their diet, they get more things like wind and bloating and flatulence. Mm. That's more likely to be the insoluble fibre. Okay. When we're manipulating fibre and we're trying to improve people's bowel habits or their bowel health, mm. it really is very individual and it depends on their diet and their body and what they've had before. And how do you know what's best for you? So one of the weird things about our bowels and about our bums in general is we completely take them for granted <laughs> until something goes wrong, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm guilty! <laughs> right. I've worked with patients with colorectal disorders, so specifically colorectal problems for a long time. Um, one of the reasons I love working in that area so much is because you can make such a difference to people's lives, course, right? So you know the problem that you had. I'm sure you would have done anything to get rid of it quickly. Mm -hmm. The patients who I look after may have been like incontinent, so have pooed themselves in public for many years. That's so embarrassing. They've got no control. It's so hard, isn't yeah, it? It ruins your quality really of life. It's really embarrassing, yeah. People don't want to go to work. Yeah. It's really hard. Whereas when you can help people in that situation, it's so rewarding. Yeah, of course. Here's something important to think about with your rectum. Yeah. So your bum hole knows what's up above it, what's sitting above it, whether okay. it's gas or liquid oh. or solid, doesn't it? Oh, well, you don't have to think about it. it. Oh, well, Most yeah, I guess time. so. I guess I don't, yeah. yeah you yeah. know whether you're going to have diarrhea, yes. generally. You know whether that stool's going to be really hard and difficult yes. to pass, and you yeah. know whether it's gas, yeah. because otherwise when you're trying to fart, you would yeah, just you, push yeah, you out, right? Of course. Those nerves in your rectum are so sensitive and so clever. I would be surprised if you had like a balloon filled with gas, liquid or solid, whether mm. you, and on your hand, whether you'd be able to tell definitely with your eyes closed what was in it, but your bum knows, right? Mm, and true. so when that those nerves go wrong for any reason, or mm. when things are disrupted, 
then it causes loads and loads of problems with people. Mm. How can people use fibre to manipulate their symptoms? So it massively depends on what their problem is in the first place. Okay. So um, for example, you remember the problem that you had with your mm. piles, yeah? Mm -hmm. So what's happening there is you've got some inflammation, so things are a little bit more swollen than we'd like yes. them to be. It was so pain. <sighs> I could cry. It was painful. It was really bad. Yeah. <laughs> so things are swollen and um, a bit blocked up in your bottom, so it's more difficult. So if you ate loads of things like insoluble fibre, peas, mm. beans, pulses, mm. stuff mm. like that, you're creating a bulky stool, mm -hmm. which is then going to be difficult to get through that gap when it's mm. a bit swollen and a bit uncomfortable, yeah? Mm -hmm. So what I said to you was, lots of soluble fibre, yes. like lots of melon, lots of root vegetables, things like that, strawberries. I great. ate a lot of strawberries. <laughs> But being careful with things like grapes, which have all got a skin on yes. them, being careful with peas and yes. sweet corn and stuff yes. like that, that all yes. has those little husks on it yeah. that can then build up and, and collect. Okay. So that's a great example for you. Yeah. Um, if someone's got bloating, then again, there's some really specific fibres yeah. that we might try and cut out or manipulate, mm. but it very much depends on an individual. Mm. So how do I know I'm getting enough fibre in my diet? The recommended amount of fibre in the day, that includes soluble and insoluble fibre, so all the different types of fibre, is 30 grams. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Most people in the UK are getting about 18 grams a day. Almost everybody needs to increase how much fibre they're having. Yeah. yeah? Mm. If you think about what fibre is in, mm -hmm. if we think about things like whole grain bread, for example, mm -hmm. it's a good source of fibre. Peas and beans and pulses are yes. great sources of fibre. Yes. Um, any vegetables will have some fibre, any okay. fruit will have some fibre. So really the key is to focus your meals around whole grain carbohydrates and or pulses okay. and some nuts and seeds and things like that. Gut yeah. health is becoming more popular and people are becoming yeah. more engaged with it. Yeah. So it's really about making sure that, you know, if you were having, say, some white pasta, and some chicken and not really having much in the way of veg mm. then you're definitely not getting enough mm, um, mm. fibre in your meal but if you switch that to some whole grain pasta and you chucked in some chickpeas maybe and you had some other vegetables and you had mm. a bit of chicken then you've got the balance right and we know that the healthiest people in the world have the most diverse range yeah. of gut bacteria yeah. and they're eating a really diverse range of plants yeah. every day and all kinds of different things yeah. and that's what keeps it healthy let's talk about supplements yeah now i've seen these adverts about yogurts prebiotics and all that like or you know even the tablets yeah, even yeah, yeah. what how what what <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about supplements? Are they good? <laughs> so some are, some are great, okay. some are not so great, but the research into your microbiome, so the environment, the bacterial environment in your colon, is really early, so we don't right. know a lot about it. Okay. The best advice and the best thing that we know is that the more diverse the species you have, the better, like I was saying before, the right? Species of bacteria. Yeah, <laughs> many different species of bacteria in your colon Oh my god, possible. it sounds really weird, like we're brewing these aliens inside of us. They're part <laughs> of us. I think that the statistic is, cell for cell, we're only a tenth human. So the rest of us is bacteria and microbes. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of all the genetic and wow. DNA material in our bodies, that's only 10% so awesome. of it is ours, the rest that's, is microbes. That's freaking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> there's two sides to supplements. Okay. There's prebiotics, so the fibre that feed the bacteria. Okay. And then there's probiotics, okay. which contain the actual bacteria. Most things that you put in the top end mm. are going to be killed by your stomach acid. Okay. Okay. So when people are like, you must have loads of kombucha for your gut health. Mm -hmm. Actually, most of that bacteria doesn't even get off. through. Yeah. yeah. Your stomach is like not far off battery acid, anything mm. that goes in turns to acid immediately and mm. that's not a good environment for most bacteria to survive in. Mm, probiotic, probiotic tablets yeah. have a special coating that get hopefully get them to travel all the way through to your colon. Mm. The research into them is that some people massively benefit, some people don't benefit at all. Okay. We often can't get them to reproduce the same benefit in different people. Of course, because everyone is different, yeah. right? So. And there are different strains that do different things, but mm. ultimately it's quite complicated and early science. It's really important if you think about taking a probiotic that you get some advice and that you're doing it for the right reasons mm. and you're, you're treating the right symptom because there's yeah. various different strains and different types and it's important you get the right one for you. I saw a video um, about eating too much fibre. Okay. Is there such a thing and can it be bad for you? Certainly, if you eat loads and loads of fibre, you can get some of these symptoms that we were talking about, so okay. like wind and bloating and discomfort. Right. That doesn't necessarily mean it's bad for you. Okay. okay? Having too much of some types of fibre stops you absorbing some of the nutrients from your food. There was a big craze, I think it was in the 80s, for mums to feed their little babies bran, right? Ah, huh, the thingy, the cereal. Yeah. Oh, see, it was dragging so high in fibre that it doesn't give the bowel enough time to absorb other nutrients. Uh, so it's dragging like iron out. So all right. these little babies were turning up with anemia because their diet oh, was so high in fibre. Right, right, okay. We semi run the risk of that now with lots of uh, lots of people pushing plant-based diets on their children and stuff like that. So it's yeah, a little bit dangerous yeah. the game, but ultimately most people 
do well with enough fibre in their diet as long as it's not causing them GI discomfort, gastro dis discomfort. Okay. Okay. Often it's that kind of change in fibre intake, mm -hmm. so it's like moving on to a new type of diet or when you try to reintroduce new fibre, mm. you remember that basically what you're doing is feeding more of your gut, you're feeding more food to your gut bacteria, so mm. they're going to be busier, they're yeah. going to be fermenting more, yes. they're going to change. Yes. And for that reason, you may experience some symptoms. And yeah. if that's worrying you and it's causing you problems, yeah. don't think, oh, I need to cut out the fiber. Go and yeah. chat to somebody Go, yeah. and see if you can adjust yeah. it in a way that might make suit you better. Okay, so for the bit that you've all been waiting for, these are our top tips for getting more fiber into your diet. Tip number one, aim for two to three portions of vegetables per meal. And within that, make sure you're having different kinds of vegetables throughout the day so you're not sticking to just the one. So another thing would be to make sure you have at least one high fiber snack a day. So that might be things like nuts, and seeds, it might be different types of fruit, or things like oat cakes and peanut butter is a great snack. Tip number three, have whole grain carbs instead of white ones. Yeah, great tip. And also remember that if it's too much of a leap to go from, say, white rice to whole grain rice, you could always have a combination of the two while you transition through. Yeah. Yeah, you can yeah. mix pasta as well. I exactly. Love it. Yeah. Tip number four <laughs> is to think about including some seeds where you can. So they're great to be sprinkled on salads. You can add them to your cereal and even sprinkle them on top of soup, and they are delicious. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you guys for watching, and make sure you have a look in the description box below for Sophie's details, so you can follow her on Instagram. If you have any questions at all that you think you know you want to ask Sophie, then please, please get in touch. And of course, she has her clinics in London, so you can actually come to clinic as well. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.